There will only be 41 starters for the TM Lights race of Portland because Wolf Sport driver Takumi Nagata crashed very hard in qualifying and he was not medically cleared to take the start here. Winning the Delano Polo Award, driving for Leonard Roderick's team, car number 96, Friedrich Jaeger. The German is the Wernsham factory driver in the TM Master Cup Series. He's a uh, multiple-time German supercar champion. Look uh, for car 96. There's his teammate, Axel Andersen, car number four. Trying to make a very ambitious move to try to get around uh, Jaeger in the festival chicane, and Andersen stacks up the field. Surprisingly, no one makes any uh, serious contact behind him as Jaeger pulls away in that 96 Eagler car. Andersen, car number four, has been having a pretty solid season. He's... Uh, been, uh, he's been doing very, very well over the season. He could be having a run at the uh, TM Lights Championship, but he's got Robert Blake all over him, and Robert Blake has not been having the best rookie season in that seven car, but uh, he's been doing a lot better than the uh, man he replaced, which was, who was Bernard Strauss. It's Nick Azure, car number 46, squeezes off Dexter Hamlet and Steve Holliday Jr., and Nick Azure takes himself into the tires, and he is the first retirement. Here is Jim Davidson, car number 29. That is the, uh, the Interdrain Motorsports car. Uh, Davidson won last year at Michigan. He's, uh, he starred in the TM Master Cup Series round of Carbondale. So the, uh, the American has been having a very, very good uh, season so far. Not necessarily in this series, but just in general. Here are the, here's one of the MRT drivers, Darren Cardell, car 87, running in seventh place. His team owner, Daniel Melrose, running in eighth. So a pretty good start for the MRT boys. We've been looking pretty strong on the road courses. They just haven't had any luck as Darren Cardell comes right on the inside of Brandon LaRoe. Takes him by surprise. Great move by Cardell to get himself to sixth as you follow Andy Miha punts Lane Cranston off the road. Not exactly one of the most gentlemanly things I've seen, but Yafali Enemy has been around a, a bit long to know better than to do that. Scott Washington, one of the Pequa winners, car number zero, coming into the festival chicane, gets run over right there by the 54 of Daxter Hamlet. There goes Calvin O'Reilly off the road. Car 67, Joe Lennick, Archer Harris uh, stacked up from this. And uh, there's Han Young Sung and Matt Brinson in the background. And Gerald Johnson in that third black and red 38 car that looks a lot like the one car. As Kevin O'Reilly, I think, just went off. As uh, Scott Washington running back in 20, as was running in 27. Here's Kevin O'Reilly going way off, way off, way off, and into the wall. Well, Calvin O'Reilly, the uh, former Arla standout, not having a good season so far. Han Young Sung, car number 71, is having problems on that car, the gravity racing car. Uh, they've, they've been having a decent weekend by their standards, but it looks like their day is going to end very early and the Korean driver goes out. Brooke Ingerson, car 61, has had nothing short of a messy season, comes flying in a turn one, runs into the back of one of the Lynx cars, and whoa, Mariano Zavala comes flying and runs into Ingerson. I don't know how Mariano Zavala had thought that was going to stick, but... Uh, he left his braking way too late. Robert Blake is running in third. He's been uh, kind of mediocre all season, but he's doing better than the man he replaced to get this this car. He was doing better than what Bernard Strauss is doing last season. So I guess by, if you look at it by that, look at it that way, Robert Blake is somewhat of an improvement. Uh, Brooke Ingerson into the pit lane early. Thurston Blood, and it looks like Steve Holiday Jr. and Yafaliani Miha in. Interestingly enough. All of those cars have been off the road on that Sarcher Harrison as well, so he's actually kept all the fenders clean on that car. Anyways, as Bob Steffens goes by Robert Blake to take over third, there's, oh, Dan Richards has had a, a bit of a bust up in the 133 car that we, that we apparently missed. Richards, last year's ASCC champion. Oh, that could have been a big, big collision right there. Robert Blake, not uh, quite sure where to go, and right behind them, uh, well, anyways, uh, Dan Richards not exactly been having a good week, and that's this really is just sort of capping that off. He's got the front end of that car missing. Looking back at Ike Durbin in the 08 car, who at this point last year, at this track last year, was, I do believe, leading the championship. What a difference a year makes. Ike Durbin in the 08 car has not had quite the same uh, kind of level of success he did last season as James Jones in the 1 car. Got smoke billowing out the back of that car, and he's holding up all sorts of traffic here. He, uh, this is the car that uh, Troy Adams took to the championship last year, and James Jones won the most recent race at New York, at uh, Milwaukee, sorry, and um, he's uh, going to be out of this one early. Brandon LaRoe, car 33, has been having a uh, relatively quiet season. He hasn't been involved in uh, too many shenanigans, but um, this 33 car is sitting very, very high in the championship right now. 
Claire Aussier runs into the back of Steve Holiday Jr. entering the festival chicane. We've seen quite a bit of that. You see Mike Andrews in the 51 car. The back end of that car is all kicked up. So he's had some contact as well. A lot of people leaving their braking points a bit too late. Aussier in the 11 car. Uh, there's been a lot of people saying that Aussie could be moving up to the Master Cup Series next year. However, with the rate she's going this year, uh, I would say wait and see. The Lynx women's team seems to be rather patient on developing Aussie as she's working around Vijay Pushanda on the 18 car, who's having uh, one of his best weekends all season long. Friedrich Jaeger has uh, absolutely been dominating this race as we're 10 laps in. The, uh, the Eagler Bolden is uh, pretty much just leaving the rest of the field in the dust right now. Very distinctive Eagler. It's not really a paint job. It's just the black car with some blue on it. But the Eagler, uh, the famous Eagler colors, are uh, really uh, spreading their wings and taking off from the rest of the field. His teammate Axel Andersson is a somewhat distant second. As oh, he's got Ingverson off the road. Ingverson really been struggling with that 61 car, and I don't think Jaeger's really in a hurry to lap her. Um, anyways, looking back at Thurston Blood, 2011 champion of the series, as Daniel Melrose goes a bit wide. There's Jim Davidson, uh, Thurston Blood running in eighth. Uh, Melrose, that 73 car, is really trying to hold off uh, Davidson, but uh, the Mad Uncle might have uh, might have Davidson and Thurston Blood uh, breathing down his neck. And um, Thurston Blood maybe could be setting up uh, Davidson, but Davidson defends, and Melrose really, really trying to keep those two guys behind him. As Thurston Blood peeks on the inside of Jim Davidson, and he's going to go right on by, it looks like. Davidson trying to fight back. Uh, I don't think he's going to have quite the run. No, and he lets uh, blood go by. Joel Rodriguez in the 40 car. Oh, contact with Leah Cerrone, and Jacob Eicholz joins him. Okay, I don't know how Eicholz thought that was going to stick coming into the festival chicane, but regardless, Rodriguez has had a, uh, well, not necessarily the best of seasons here in this 40 car, but uh, that being said, uh, that's not helping his day early. Uh, here's his race anyway. Joe Olenek is driving this race with a hurt wrist. And uh, there's so oh, I see a problem with that 23 car. He has been having a predictably mediocre run, and that's going to end fairly early. Ashley Tucker into the back of Mike Andrews, who I think is getting sick of people running into the back of him. Uh, Ashley Tucker, car 12. That's the one of the other Lynx women's team cars. Jacob Card is into the pit lane on lap 12 in car 15. Uh, ahead of him, Friedrich Jaeger also came in in the 96. So, um... That is a bit before that previous shot there. So Jaeger into the pits. And here's Axel Andersson, car number four. He is going to be pitting one lap later on lap 13. So the Leonard Rodder cars aren't pitting on the same lap to avoid them running into each other in the pit lane. Robert Blake is all, also uses uh, Andersson's pit strategy, but most everybody else hits the pit lane on lap 14, as you can see right here where that mob of cars in. Whoa, Dexter Hamlet, way too late. Uh, breaking way too late into the festival chicane. He's running back in 26th place. And, uh, um, well, that's Cerrone right behind him. Our Archer Harris in that 79 car has uh, been keeping that car rather clean. Axel Andersson, though, is now leading the race. He had a better uh, pit stop than Friedrich Jaeger did. So the Swede now leads here at Portland, but he's sliding that car all over the place. And, uh, oh, oh, he's off the road. Andersson going to be burning his tires off quite a bit. And not only that, but losing a lot of track time to Jaeger, who seems to be very smooth here around Portland. Mark Blackwell and Buffy Boreanaz are fighting for fifth place right here. And uh, the 22 car, Blackwell. It looks like he's going to take it right now. Ike Durbin in the mix as well in car number 08. So he's, I do believe he's running in fourth. As, um, oh no, that was battle for six back there because Bob Steffen is leading Robert Blake uh, in car number seven. Brooke Ingerson in car number 61 is running in 23rd, goes off the course, back onto the track into Joel Rodriguez, sweeps across um, into VJ Pushanda, and why is it that any that every driver that steps into the Matthews Motorsports car immediately becomes very, very um, accident prone? Something tells me that might not be necessarily the fault of the drivers, and that it might be a case of the team just not uh, clicking well. We know Ingerson's talented. Uh, we know that team has had some issues, but um, uh, they're having they're not having a good year. Uh, anyways, as you see, Daniel Melrose playing bumper tag with the 22 of Mark Blackwell. And, um, well, Melrose might not exactly uh, be terribly happy with how he's being raced. Robert Blake, car number 7, running uh, back and forth as we've gotten our scoring monitor uh, corrected. Blake is running in fourth in this number 7 car. 
He's having a pretty good job. They're doing a pretty good job so far in this seven car today. If he can just keep it where it, where it is, it'll be his uh, best finish in the series by far. Car number three is Casas Theodorakis in uh, Theodorakis, sorry. Running in 11th, he's got a new sponsor on that car, slightly different paint job, but it is still a white car, the Triple Crown Enterprises car. Uh, they've, had, they've had some funding issues all year. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't even take the green flag in the first race of the season. They blew up before that race even started. As uh, Friedrich Jaeger has a run on Axel Andersen for the lead of the race coming into the Festival Chicane, and there you go. I think that should tell you enough because Friedrich Jaeger has been very smooth around this track, and he's easily got by Andersen in the Festival Chicane. As Jaeger now pulling, trying to pull away from Andersen, coming very close to um, throwing that thing into the scenery. Archer Harris and uh, Yefeli Anumi have pitted again, and the 79 car has been having a decent weekend here. And oh, hooks the back of Theodorakis, and they're both off, and Archer Harris had been having a pretty good day in the Rick Milligan car, but that was um, unnecessary, I think. Uh, anyways, now we're looking back at uh, Andersen, who was running in second. Bob Steffens, who's running in third in the 07 car. Uh, and Andersen uh, is going to hold off Steffens, it looks like. And did Steffens hit the pit lane? Yes, he did. Mike Durbin did as well in the background. So Bob Steffens kicking off uh, part of the green black pit cycle. Darren Cardell in the 87, way off the road. Uh, he's going to try to get that thing back on. Not in front of the 59 of Kwan Singh. There goes Matt Brinson in that blue and pink 25. Gerald Johnson, the black 38 car. So Darren Cardell losing uh, quite a few places, but at the same time, he uh, was paying attention there. He didn't merge right in front of somebody and almost caused him a bigger accident. So uh, points for gentlemanly driving, if nothing else. Scott Washington, the zero car. That car looks like it's been through a war zone. Paul Lyons in the two cars uh, trying to get around him. And, um, well, oh, Lyons just hooks the zero car hard into the wall, and Washington out of the race. Friedrich Jaeger into the pits in lap 25. His t uh, teammate Axel Andersen in the pit lane uh, is one of the last cars into the pits, along with Robert Blake in the seven car. Uh, so here's Robert Blake in uh, car number seven, who has um, been having, as I mentioned earlier, been having one of his best runs all year. His best run by far all year, lo all season long. Mark Blackwell. Car 22 is actually the last car to pit in uh, the Unit 11 car. Pretty uh, distinctive paint job here. Or rather, I would say that's distinct if there weren't so many blue cars in the series. Jacob Card, very ambitious around the outside of Robert Blake and contact. The Canadian veteran Jacob Card makes contact with Robert Blake and gets the position. And that is uh, going to put Card in uh, fourth place, actually. So, uh, Jacob Card, pretty ambitious and... Uh, well, a pretty ambitious piece of driving here. Robert Blake in the seven car. Whoa! Blake throws it off into the scenery. He got back by card, and then he lost it again. Robert Blake, very, very ambitious there. Anyways, Bob Steffens, car 07, is trying to keep up with Andersen, car number four, in that uh, the Team Thunder car. He's uh, not won a race yet in the series. But now we're looking at Axel Andersen now in that blue number four. And oh, Steffens into the back of him. Bob Steffens punts the four car late in the going. And that is going to be a pass for position. And the 07 car takes over second place. But he would have to pit for that front end damage. And now Jacob Card one lap later. Same thing. Jacob Card runs into the back of the four car. But Bob Steffens and Jacob Card would both have to pit for all the front end damage they received. Uh, running into the back of the four cars, so uh, I'd have to say instant karma right there. Card in the 15 car threw away a pretty good run here, uh, basically leaving his braking way too late and being uh, a little bit foolish. Ashley Tucker in car number 12 has actually been elevated into third place because of all the uh, proceedings, and with Robert Blake falling further back in the field after that, uh, after throwing that car off into the scenery, as you see Blake in the background. But uh, Ashley Tucker is now sitting in third. As here's Jacob Card pitting for all that front end damage. But nothing could stop Friedrich Jaeger, who, as soon as he got into the lead, ran away with it. Friedrich Jaeger takes his maiden team lights victory here at Portland. So, Leonard Roderick's cars end up going 1 2. Jaeger and Andershun. Ashley Tucker with a, um, well, half of a car seemingly comes home in third. 
Buffy Boreanaz, Jim Davidson on a good run, Daniel Melrose, one of his best results of the season. Still missing a top five finish, but uh, Melrose in that 73 car has done very well all season. Thurston Blood, Bobby Dollar, who won earlier at Carbondale, Gerald Johnson, Matt Brinson, who's been uh, very solid lately. There you see Bob Steffens in 13th. Uh, Steffens, of course, uh, had, all, had all that front end damage caused by running into the back of Axel Anderson. Jacob Card, likewise. Brandon LaRoe really fell through the field due to uh, poor pit work. Uh, Claire Alcier is sort of in the same scenario. Lane Cranston, a pretty uh, good recovery despite being run over. Mariano Zavala, Jacob Eicholtz, and Leah Cerrone takes home the final point. Winning the Delano Pole Award for the TM Lines race at Darlington is Gerald Johnson in the Unit 11 Motorsports car. Car number 38 leads the field to the green flag. That is Mariano Zavala on the outside of the front row. Great qualifying effort for the Venezuelan, but not a very good start because uh, Johnson and Buffy Boreanaz really got a jump on the rest of the field. Car 24, Boreanaz having a peak on Johnson, really trying to go for the lead early. Mariano Zavala in the 45, on the other hand, is stacking up the outside lane. What a surprise. Ike Durbin going through in the 08 car. That horrendous uh, red and cyan car, that 88 car of Steve Holliday Jr. is going to go by. And uh, anyways, Buffy Boreanaz, car 24, sizing up Johnson to have a run at the lead. Oh, Johnson really defending there. Boreanaz, oh, we got Davidson in the wall in the 28 car. Davidson almost runs into Ike Durbin. Buffy Boreanaz is now having a run on the 38 car. I think there may have been a little contact there. Not exactly uh, the most gentlemanly thing to do, but Buffy Boreanaz goes through into the lead to stake her claim on this race. As we've got contact in the back, teammate Thurston Blood pinched Lane Cranston into the wall. And Jacob Eichelton, oh, here we go. We got a big one. We're stacking him up. Takumi Nagata in it. Uh, Joe Olenek in it. Jacob Card. Paul Lyon. Actually, I don't think Jacob Card. I think Card may have missed that. Rodriguez in the 40 car is going to get a lot of damage here. He has nowhere to go, but into the into the side of the uh, uh, Cranston car, you see Calvin O'Reilly in it. Robert Blake, Archer Harris in it. Oh, a lot of cars all torn up in this mess. Looking at Lane Cranston in the 14 car. And Thurston Blood just does not seem like he was paying attention at all. And he just squeezed Cranston into the wall. Very, very questionable maneuver there. Elena in it, Nagata in it. Looks like Nick Azure in it again. Uh, I think Jacob Card actually missed that, and Paul Lyons did as well. Joe Lenick, as I mentioned, that uh, he hurt his wrist back at Peoria, and I. I wonder if that crash might have aggravated that injury. I hope it didn't, but Joe Lenick out of it in the uh, in the TARDIS car. Jacob Eichel to the 31 out of it um, as well. Uh, he had quite a bit of damage to the, to the side of that car. So uh, I think Eichel's, uh, Eichel's the season not uh, sort of falling apart a little bit as Johnson leads on the restart. Ike Durbin second, Boreanaz third, and uh, Ade Jr. in, uh, in uh, sitting back and forth. Johnson slides it around a bit, and Ike Durbin going to have a run on him for the lead of the race. Durbin, of course, runs for Terra International Motorsports in the Independence Trophy in the Master Cup Series, so he's had a pretty busy schedule. Here's Darren Cardell in the 87 car running back in fifth place. Uh, the 38 car of Gerald Johnson has had his car go way loose on him, and Cardell thinks about going three wide, but uh, then thinks better of it. Buffy Boreana is going to slide on the inside of the 38 car, it looks like, as the, whoa, Johnson, way, way out of shape as Costa Theodorakis follows suit. Looking back at Claire Ousie, car number 11, who won this race last season in um, driving for the Lynx women's team. She's uh, running a Gessler this year. Back in, whoa, J uh, Jones had a big lift there, bit of a moment there. As we've got Zavala into the wall, and Ousie is going to, well, not get run over by the Venezuelan. They had a bit of a run-in during practice, and uh, obviously it wasn't terribly pleased about it. As Mark Blackwell in car number 22 has a tire going down, uh, he pits before that blows out and causes a caution. Steve Holiday Jr. in the 88 car currently leads the race. Um, that's uh, by far the probably the least attractive car on the circuit. Uh, Buffy Boreana sits in second, and that is Ashley Tucker sitting in third. Tucker, who's having a fantastic run tonight so far, as uh, the 88 car of Holiday Jr. begins to run down Mark Blackwell and put him a lap down. Leah Cerrone in car number 8 is making a fair bit of headway, 
And, uh, whoa, Cameron Taylor in the 68 car really forcing his way through. But Cerrone has not been terribly impressive throughout most of the season. So she really needs a couple of good results, I think, in order for, uh, uh, for her ride to really be safe going forward. Buffy Boreanaz in the 24 car is now leading the race. Ashley Tucker is going to try to slot in a second. She does so. And Ike Durbin in the 08 car, the Great Lakes Motorsports car, trying to slot into fourth. Here is James Jones, who's doing fairly well. He won the last oval race in the series in Milwaukee, but he is having a very loose. He has a very loose race car right now. And uh, Daniel Melrose in the 73 car. Uh, Melrose is having a pretty good night, going on the inside of Jones. And uh, we can see further back Bobby Dollar, Matt Brinson. That 25 car is having a, f a great start to the race. Uh, as here is Gerald Johnson, who pits from fifth on lap 20, so the 38 car into the pit lane early. Here is Ashley Tucker, uh, who has been fairly anonymous most of this season, uh, except for her sterling run at Portland when she finished on the podium, with the front end of that car missing uh, after, well, having a couple of run-ins early on. But now there she's making a run on the inside of Buffy Boreanaz. And Ashley Tucker in the number 12 Gessler moves into the lead of the race. Scott Washington, the zero car, I can tell you, has been into the pit lane already. For some for the more observant of you who may have noticed that he is actually in front of the leaders, as here comes Ike Durbin, the zero eight car, as Buffy Boreanaz nearly wipes that thing out into the wall. Ike Durbin, car 08, the Great Lakes Motorsports car. Doesn't drive for them in the Master Cup series, but um, it's an interesting arrangement they have going on there with the... Uh, one of the Lycoya factory teams in the Independence Trophy as uh, Ike Durbin, car number 08, trying to regain some lost glory as he was, uh, he ran very well last season, but just uh, his season kind of fell apart towards the end of it. So Ike Durbin trying to uh, do the best he can uh, with what he's got as Buffy Boreanaz and Steve Holiday Jr. hit the pit lane. But on the racetrack, however, while that was going on, Matt Brinson in the uh, 25 guard, it doesn't look like he was paying attention, squeezed Darren Cardell in the wall, brought out a caution. And uh, Brinson in car 25 uh, really just threw a hatchet on a lot of people's races because there were a lot of cars that were in the pit lane at this time. So this will really mess around with a running order. Buffy Boreanaz and Steve Holiday Jr. will not be terribly happy about this. As Costa Theodoricus leads the race in car number three with Jim Davidson running second and Ashley Tucker third, Daniel Melrose in fourth. And you see a lot of lap cars here. Some very fast lap cars, such as Nick Azure. Daniel Melrose is stuck on the high line right now. He's running in fourth, but uh, he's getting freight trained by uh, several lap cars. And uh, he's got Cameron Taylor in front of him. He's got Blackwell on the inside, Jacob Card. Uh, is, whoa, Melrose gets uh, a bit out of shape there. But despite all these cars going by him, he's only going to lose two places. He's going to be back in sixth, but sixth place that time he crosses the stripe right there. So Daniel Melrose in that 73 car, now that he's back on the inside line, can start making some headway on the leaders. Jacob Card, car 15, now running in fourth. Uh, the Canadian has uh, had flashes of brilliance in his TM Lights career, uh, but uh, I think this is really, I think, going to be uh, one of his final chances to really um, strike a chord with uh, some team owners. As we've got uh, contact in the back between, looks like Cameron Taylor, uh, and Buffy Boreanaz and uh, somebody else it was a black and white car and well there's there's too many black cars in this series hard to keep track of all of them uh, looking at above um, well, I could be any of them looks like Quan Singh actually uh, yeah Cameron Taylor got together with Quan Singh and Han Young Sung in the uh, 71 as Buffy Boreanaz goes around pretty good job of saving that car good heads up driving with everyone behind him uh, behind Boreanaz to avoid piling into that as Theodoricus leads again on the restart, Davidson is once again in second, and Ashley Tucker is third. Theodoricus gets a pretty good jump on the rest of the field, and Davidson is going to struggle trying to fight through all these lap cars on the outside, but uh, Davidson did win at Michigan. He certainly knows how to deal with traffic. Robert Blake in the seven car not making uh, Davidson's life very easy, however. However, I think, oh, Theodoricus way, way high there. That was almost in a no-man's land and into the wall. So uh, that would have been rather embarrassing if he would have uh, sort of uh, caused the caution right there. But you got Gerald Johnson and Robert Blake really trying to fight and get their way back in the lead lap. Now that they are now in the lead lap, uh, so we got Nick Azure, Darlington Stripe for the 46 car, and that's the team probably with the highest repair bill in the series. 
And I'm not really sure what the problem is with that 46 team, but they, they need to change something over there. Bobby Dollar in, in the 98 car is running in 6th place. He's uh, trying to chase down Jacob Card for 5th. And uh, Bobby Dollar won earlier in the year at Carbondale, which was a bit of a surprise considering he's got mostly a road racing background. His team was bought uh, by Black Diamond Racing during the offseason. Uh, he's now part of Black Diamond, and it's really, really helped him, I think. There's been some reports saying that he'll get a couple of outings later in the year in, in Black Diamond's third car in the Master Cup side of things. As Jacob Card is running down Ashley Tucker, going to get around Tucker, looks like, and then he'll set his sights on Jim Davidson. Uh, so, no, no, maybe not. Card didn't exactly have the best of runs going down the straightaway, so he's going to have to try that one again. Mike Anders in the 51 car with no sponsor on it is running in second. So this is a pretty good this is a pretty good showing for Mike Anders in the racing for the community bunch. This is a team that really needs uh, a bit of a uh, a bit of extra funding. They had a sponsor last year, but that was a one-year deal and uh, it didn't really go so well. But Mike Anders in that 51 car, I think they need uh, they need something to help pick their season up because Andrews has got the speed, but uh, uh, sometimes he just runs into too many things and. Uh, well, uh, that's not exactly going to help uh, his uh, TM Lights career out. Jim Davidson in that uh, 29 car is trying to get around a couple of lap cars who are racing each other for position, and that's always a difficult situation. Ashley Tucker, car number 12, though, is gonna is gonna try to take the lead from Davidson. Davidson tries the high line. That's a mistake. Here comes Tucker. Here comes Card. Here comes Bobby Dollar on the inside, and Jim Davidson is going backwards. Ashley Tucker is going to try the exact same thing. Oh, oh wait, Tucker might actually make this pull, make this work because Cerrone was slow enough going into turn one, and Tucker had such a huge run that she was able to sweep around Cerrone on the outside. For a minute, I thought that Tucker wasn't learning from uh, Davidson's mistakes, but uh, turns out that wasn't the case. It's Leonard Roderick's two cars, Axel Anderson and Friedrich Jaeger. Little teamwork here to get themselves to the front of the field, and Anderson, car number four. Uh, trying to score uh, another win, trying to score a win for that team, and uh, a 96 car, of course, was the winner of the last race with Friedrich Jaeger at the wheel, and we've got Dexter Hamlet around, but that's not a surprise. See Dexter Hamlet hitting something. Uh, Paul Lyons watching him in car number two because there's a secondary collision here. As oh, we got contact there, and that whoa, Paul Lyons just ricocheting all over the place. As that was, I think that was Dan Richards that sort of set that set that off. Uh, that whole um, shamazel off. But Paul Lyons and Quan Singh are both going to have a bit of a setback here. Lyons led the championship earlier in the season. Daniel Melrose in car number 73 had some reports of smoke at the back of that car after the yellow came out. S certainly enough, that was the case. And uh, to much to our disappointment, Daniel Melrose is going to go out of the race. He had been making quite a show of things in the in the upper midfield now it's in the out, outskirts of the top 10 is jim davidson leads on the restart with brandon larose second and matt brinson in third ashley tucker fourth and jacob card rounding out the top five davidson trying to hang on for his second career series victory larose trying to make uh headway here mike andrews back in eighth place in the 51 car trying to get around theater Arcus in car number three uh, as we've got, uh, no one hit the wall this time by, but some people in the back came awfully close. Uh, Matt Brinson tries to sweep on the low side a little bit ahead of him. And uh, we're watching now Brandon LaRoe, car 33. And uh, there is Matt Brinson on the inside of him. Brinson goes by. Brandon LaRoe doesn't, uh, doesn't have a primary sponsor in that 33 car. The after, whoa, is Nick Azure again in the wall? Uh, there's no uh, primary sponsor in that 33 car. They want to change that. Uh, Jacob Card leads the race right now, but Ashley Tucker has shown up in that 12 car. Ashley Tucker, who has been flying, uh, been absolutely flying tonight. Tucker having a career night so far on the inside of the uh, Canadian and goes right on by to t uh, into the lead of the race. Jacob Card trying to catch up, but he's pushing too hard. He's into the wall. Jacob Card into the wall in that 15 car. Uh, he, is, he was doing very, very well pretty much up until then. Well, I think he, the pressure got to him. We got a slow car on the inside, and that's Brooke Ingerson, the 61 car. The Arkansas native has not been having a great season with Matthews Motorsports. Uh, we know Ingerson's talented. She's, uh, well, they throw the yellow for that because the 61 car stops on track. We got five laps to go. Most everyone pitted. Darren Cardell did not, and he's staying out on old tires trying to make the best of it. Oh, boy. 
Cardell trying to make things happen here with the Melrose Racing Team, trying to hang on to score MRT's first win in its first season. Bob Steffens and uh, James Jones also did not pit. So Cardell with nothing to lose and everything to gain, trying to hang on here. Steffens right behind him. Jones trying to, oh, it's because Steffens peels off the 07 car. Might be a little contact with the one car, might be a puncture on Steffens' car. But Bob Steffens is peeling off. Disappointment for Team Thunder. But Darren Cardell now in the 87 car, trying to hang on. He doesn't have too much longer to go as James Jones is now really closing down on him. And so is Ashley Tucker in the 12 car. Jones trying to close in, but now Davidson makes a move on Tucker behind him. Oh, Darren Cardell sliding up the track. James Jones making a peek inside. And so here comes Jim, uh, Jim Davidson into the mix as a Leroux in the 33 car now emerges. But Darren Cardell, Darren Cardell is slowing. Darren Cardell, I think, is a puncture as well. And he's going to peel off. That was a gamble. He tried to make it work. But circumstances take him out of it. Big disappointment for the Melrose Racing Team, who could have bagged their first win. But now, James Jones is now leading the race. And he and, G and Jim Davidson have a big lead as Mark Blackwell is slow on the inside. Uh, they're, they're not going to throw a yellow for him, though. Davidson makes a move on Jones. And Davidson now leads. With just a couple laps to go, Ashley Tucker in the 12 is closing in. Davidson, car 29, trying to hang on for his, uh, trying to hang on and score his second ever series victory. Tucker has never won a TM Lights race before. Tucker, car number 12 has had a Tucker is really closing down on him now. Han Young Sung is in the mix, as well as a Bobby Dollar in the 98. So Tucker goes by with a uh, with a dive on the inside of Davidson who just could not hang on, but here comes Han Young Sung and Jacob Card back into the mix. White flag is out and Ashley Tucker is leading. Ashley Tucker trying to win, uh, trying to get the Lynx women's team second win in a row here at the Lady in Black, coming off turn two. Uh, down to, down the back straightaway, Han Young Sung, we've got a spin in the back. Han Young Sung trying to hang on to the final podium place, but here comes Jacob Card on the inside. And Matt Brinson in the 25 car, who's had a pretty strong uh, recovery late in the race. This is what was going on in the back. Theodorakis gets together with Axel Anderson and Mike Andrews. And the 51 went around. Ike Durbin pretty much piled into it. I'm not sure why. But back at the front of the field, coming to take her first TM Lights win, Ashley Tucker prevails at Darlington. Flinks women's team second win in a row here at Darlington. Bobby Dollar and Jacob Card complete the podium. Matt Brinson and Han Young Sun a stellar run at the end for the Korean. Get himself fifth. Uh, Steve Holiday Jr., Jim Davidson, who had a great, great uh, showing. Brandon LaRoe, VJ Pushanda, and Dan Richards rounding out the top ten. Friedrich Yeager, another solid points run. James Jones, of course, had a solid run. Robert Blake, Gerald Johnson, Paul Lyons, Quan Singh, Mike Andrews, and Ike Durbin in car number 08 rounds out the points finishers. You may notice a, a, uh, an absence of Darren Cardell in the points at all. That's sort of what happens when... Uh, you take a gamble late in the race. Cardell opted to go for the big money, and he wound up with nothing. Big disappointment for the Melrose Racing Team. Now with eight rounds in the books, let's have a look at the TM Lights Drivers' Championship as Axel Andersson, the Swedish driver, leads the championship over Brandon LaRoe, Bobby Dollar, rookie Matt Brinson, and Paul Lyons. Claire Alsia, Jim Davidson, Ashley Tucker, who makes a big jump into eighth, Buffy Boreanaz and Jacob Card round out the top 10. Han Young Sung, who's had uh, flashes of brilliance in the gravity racing car, sits 11th. Friedrich Yeager, 12th. Scott Washington. Steve Alliday Jr., who's had a couple of very strong runs this year. Ike Durbin trying to recapture some, uh, some of the uh, speed he had last year with that team. James Jones. Brooke Ingverson, uh, very, very hit or miss season for the Matthews Motorsports team. Leah Cerrone, Jacob Eicholtz, and Mike Andrews. A in back in 20th place, rounds up the top 20 in the championship, but we have a very, very interesting points battle here, especially in that battle right between about 9th and uh, 14th place, and also uh, we've got a pretty uh, interesting points battle right at the pointy end of the list we've, with Axel Andersson, Brandon LaRoe, Bobby Dollar, and Matt Brinson, drivers that have really never fought for the TM Lights championship before in their careers. The next time the TM Lights will be in action is at Road Gatineau, and the Master Cup Series will also be present, giving the TM Lights drivers all the more incentive to have a good showing there.